Hello, my name is Eliseo Perez Estable, and I'm the director of the National Institute on Minority Health and Health Disparities. And I'm here to contribute to this uh, National Cancer Policy Forum workshop to talk about intersectionality in cancer care equity. So what can science do to reduce health inequities? Um, there are four points I'd like to leave you with at the beginning. One is the standardized measurement of demographic and social factors that affect health. This is critical. A second is that we should be an engine for promoting diversity of the scientific and clinical workforce. A third point is to cultivate community engagement and build trust for sustainable relationships with our communities. And finally, implement what we know can work so that we can promote health equity. Now, promoting health equity in healthcare to reduce disparities starts with expanding access. Uh, as basic as health insurance, of course, a place and clinician are really fundamental as well. We have evidence from the ACA experiment that this works. We also have public health consensus, evidence-based interventions or clinical approaches that we know work. For example, cancer screening. And we've accomplished a lot with screening mammography, but there's other more work to be done. Coordination of care, using systems to look at patients who need more care, navigators, target conditions. Patient-centered care, the patient-centered medical home or leads to effective communication, has a setting for cultural humility to take care of diverse patients, and primary care saves lives. We need to leverage our IT uh, knowledge and our electronic health records to address equity. Um, and finally, I think it's time that we develop a performance measurement that builds on equity quality uh, and not just rely on specific parameters that we come to. This is an example of how health insurance makes a difference. It's a SEER uh, study of over 175,000 women screened for breast cancer, found to have breast cancer. And the, the question was, who had stage one, two curable uh, success of screening versus three or four, um, it, which would be a failure of screening, or, or now you have to manage it differently and more as a chronic disease. Uh, you can see the data for distribution of the sample, fairly diverse. And if you had uh, Medicaid or uninsured, these women, uh, they were not Medicare eligible, 20% um, had stage three versus 11% with more private insurance. Uh, after adjusting for insurance and socioeconomic status, there was still increased risk of presenting with stage three for African-American women, Latina women, and American Indian, Alaska Native women. Half of the disparity was mediated by lack of insurance. So this is structural, this is access, this is something we can fix. Patient-clinician communication is really important. Um, it has not been subjected to as much research as I think it needs to be. It is directly linked to higher patient satisfaction, better adherence with recommended treatments, and improved health outcomes. Um, among patients. Race concordant visits for African-American patients are longer and more patient-centered and very eloquent studies done several years ago uh, by Dr. Lisa Cooper at Johns Hopkins. And if one looks at the medical expenditure panel survey study of the um, Agency for Healthcare Quality Research, African-American and Latino physicians in that study care for over 50% of self-identified minorities, over 70% of persons who have limited English proficiency, and more Medicaid-insured patients or more uninsured patients. But in 2020, only 14% of medical school graduates and 12% of practicing physicians were unrepresented in medicine. Now, diversity in science and medicine is really a demographic mandate. We, we must uh, urgently address this 40% of people in the 2020 census identified as one of the race ethnic minority groups and over 50% of children uh, already are from these groups. We have to develop a diverse biomedical scientific workforce that will help us conduct better science, better research, engage underrepresented populations to participate in research 
Um, and this diversity principle is based on equal inclusion of people from all backgrounds, but especially those who were viewed differently because of uh, current or past exclusionary practices. Now, generalists provide ongoing care with cancer patients. We need to think in terms of shifting models of care to population health built on strong primary care. Generalists coordinate care and sustain trusting long-term relationships with patients. A specialist will take care of a patient during their illness. And in the case of cancer, doing perhaps one, two years of active treatment, but then they need to hand off the patient, coordinate care with a generalist. Breast, colon, and prostate cancers are really more like chronic diseases, like diabetes or heart failure that need to be managed, screening, uh, ch uh, checks being be made, and consultations made appropriately. For example, annual screening mammography in women who survive stage one and two breast cancer makes a difference. And we know that lacking primary care increases the risk of not getting these annual screening mammograms for both Latina, African-American, and white women. And all these chronic disease managements are really best done uh, through a coordinated primary care setting. Now I'll leave you with what NIMHD considers population with health disparities, just so we are on the same page in the discussion. Um, the four bullets at the top are, are uh, mandated populations with health disparities, sexual and gender minorities we declared in 2016. And we embrace the notion that a social disadvantage that results from being subject to discrimination or racism is a common theme across these populations. So when a health outcome is worse in these populations compared to a referent group, that's what we define as a health disparity. We also uh, support the notion that race ethnicity as a self-identified social construct and socioeconomic status are fundamental in determining health. They influence life expectancy, mortality. Most chronic diseases are more common in poor people of any color. Cancer rates substantially vary by race, ethnicity, social class, and birthplace. And among persons who smoke, lung cancer rates vary by race and ethnicity after adjusting for a man of combustible tobacco exposure. And that has not been fully explained. This is another example of intersectionality. We see uh, race, ethnicity, youth obesity uh, divided by gender, as well as uh, the level of uh, education, the years of education of the head of household. You see a benefit of education across the board, but you see that benefit not be equally distributed. Plus, Blacks and Latinos start off with much higher rates of youth obesity. This is what we need to continue to do more of. Finally, let me end with a mention of racism. Um, it's uh, implied, but uh, just to share these data from the Kaiser Family Foundation survey from 2015 of what uh, individuals responded to what they had experienced in the past 30 days um, in uh, store, work, entertainment, place, dealing with police, or getting health care. You can see that over half of African Americans and over a third of Latinos responded, yes, mind you, in the last 30 days. Now, we do a lot better in health care, but we should really always do better in health care. And the whole issue of trust in clinician, the institution, the role of unconscious bias may be um, a topics for discussion. Uh, we operationalize racism as a research construct using these categories. The toughest one to think about is structural racism, and we're embarking on an intense uh, approach, intense investment uh, to study this, this history, culture, institutions, and policies that have codified practices that perpetuate inequity, uh, and uh, we shall see what that effort will bring. Thank you very much for your attention. I look forward to the discussion.